Were you there? Were you there when Jesus asked the disciples to stay awake while he prayed, but they fell asleep instead? Were you there when Judas betrayed Jesus with a kiss? Were you there when Peter lost his temper and sliced off the ear of the servant Malchus? Were you there to remember that Jesus had been welcomed into Jerusalem with a parade, with palms and hosannas? But just a short time later, was dragged through the city and treated like a criminal. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? On this Good Friday, we hear the story. We enter into the story, and we imagine that we were there. Welcome to this Journey to the Cross Good Friday worship service. We call today Good Friday not because of what happened to Jesus, but because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. Through Jesus dying on the cross for our sins, he defeated death so that we might have eternal life. That's why we call today Good Friday. This worship service is a worship experience. We will experience the story of Good Friday with all of our senses. And so in just a minute, I'm going to invite you to actually pause the video to go and collect some things from around your home that will help you to experience the story with all of your senses. So here what, here's what I want you to do. I want you to pause the video for just a moment, and I want you to go around and collect some things that are sweet. Like if you have some Hershey's Kisses, that would be the best. But anything sweet or anything chocolate, uh, that will help us to uh, taste the story. I want you to get a cup of water or a bowl of water for everybody uh, that is watching this worship service and participating with us. So get either a glass or a bowl of water or some hand sanitizer. And finally, I want you to uh, get, some, uh, a, get a nail. Perhaps you won't have a nail quite as big as this one, uh, but if everybody could have a nail so that they can think about um, Jesus hanging on the cross uh, when we get to that part of the service. So you can go ahead and pause right now and go collect those items. Now that you've collected your items, we can begin worship. I invite you to enter into the story 
to hear it, to feel it, to see it, to experience the story of Jesus going to the cross with all of your senses and experience from the perspective of all the different characters that we will meet. Let us pray. O God, give us eyes to see the triumph of the cross. Even when all seems lost, even as we mourn the death of Jesus and the sinfulness of humanity, remind us that your Son conquered the grave by entering into it and unraveling it from the inside out. Help us to experience with all of our senses that you are turning the world on its head. May we recognize your upside-down kingdom breaking into this world. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. And now the first character that we encounter in our journey to the cross is Judas. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, what will you give me if I betray Jesus to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver. And from that moment, he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. Later, when Jesus was in the garden, Judas arrived, and with him a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priest, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign saying, the one I will kiss is the man Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. 
But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. So we just heard about Judas betraying Jesus with a kiss. And just a few moments ago, I invited you to find something sweet in your home. Perhaps you found some chocolate. Perhaps you found a Hershey's kiss or two. And at this time, I would invite you to take out that Hershey's kiss or whatever is sweet and you can eat it. Again, Judas betrayed Jesus with a kiss. And so I have 30 Hershey's kisses here to represent those 30 pieces of silver that Judas got for betraying Jesus. So what I want you to do is take that sweet thing, that Hershey's kiss if you've got it, and taste it because a kiss is something sweet, right? It's supposed to be something loving. But if we really taste the story... Perhaps this chocolate or sweet thing will be bitter. And so we taste the story now. And I encourage you to really maybe roll up whatever wrappings you have of that sweet thing and keep it in your hand as we continue to hear the story. Roll it around in your fingers and think about other times in your life when you've betrayed someone or when you've been betrayed. And think of the love that Jesus has for us, even when we betray him in our lives. following at a distance. There was a fire in the middle of the courtyard, so he sat down to warm himself. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with him. But Peter denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else on seeing him said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then, about an hour later still, another kept insisting, Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. 
But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. My worth is not in what I own, not in the strength of flesh and bone, but in the costly wounds of love at the cross. My worth is not in skill or name, in win or lose, in pride or shame. in my Redeemer, greatest treasure, the spring of my soul. I will trust in Him, no other. My soul is satisfied in Him alone. As summer flowers we fade, in wealth or mind, nor human wisdom's fleeting light, but I will boast in knowing Christ at the cross. I rejoice in my Redeemer, greatest treasure, wellspring I will trust in him, no other. My soul is satisfied in him alone. Two wonders here that I confess, my worth and my unworthiness. My value fixed, my ransom paid. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, let him be crucified. Then he asked, why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify him. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, 
saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. This year, while hearing the story about Jesus going towards the cross, I noticed a part of the story that I haven't really noticed before. It's that, that part where Pilate says, I wash my hands of all of this. Because lately, all we've been doing is washing our hands. We wash our hands, we sanitize our hands. So I invited you early on in the worship service to make sure that everybody uh, that is participating in the service has a glass of water or a bowl of water. And to remember those words of Pilate saying, I wash my hands of all of this. And, and there are times in our lives when we try to wash our hands of all of the bad things that we've done, right? Right? And so Pilate is trying to do that same thing. He's saying, I don't want anything to do with the death of this man, right? And so water or hand sanitizer, and I try to scrub it all off. But I want you to think, too, about that story that we heard about Peter betraying Jesus, denying that he knew Jesus by the campfire. And if you were at a campfire, you could pour water all over yourself, you could scrub yourself, but there would still always be that little smell of the campfire. And that is what this whole Jesus going to the cross is all about. We cannot wash all of our sins away. All of the bad things that we have done and we will do, all of those sins that we try to wash away, they can't be washed away, and it's why Jesus goes to the cross. They put a crown of thorns on his head. I invited you to go find a nail, and at this time I would invite you to hang on to that nail and maybe feel the sharpness of the nail. We can imagine that the nails that they used to hang Jesus on the cross were something like this size, incredibly big. We think of the incredible pain, the suffering that Jesus did because of his love for us, because he truly washes away all of our sins. led him into the courtyard of the palace, and they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. Which prisoner do you want me to pardon? Barabbas or Jesus the 
the so-called Christ. What should I do with Jesus? Crucify him. Nail him to a tree. What has he done wrong? They're crucifying him. Barabbas. They're crucifying the man that took your place. I don't mean your place. I'm not saying you should be crucified. Cells are next to each other. The crowd is picking up. We need to go. There was a hole in the wall between the cells. I could pull a, a piece out and see him. I saw everything. Barabbas. The Romans may have let you go, but they aren't going to let you live. They beat him. They cursed him. They spit on him. He never said a thing. He... He never fought back. Once we get out of town and find someone to treat your wound... Did you see what they did to him? back. That crown. Those thorns. At least it wasn't you. Why not? Why not me? Why him? I don't know why not. But if we're going to leave, we need to leave now. Stop! Stop talking! Just
There they crucified Jesus, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. One of the criminals hanging there kept deriding Jesus and saying, are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him saying, do you not fear God? since you are under the same sentence of condemnation. And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. While the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen clothes according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there.
The flowering of the cross ritual is a reminder of how Nicodemus covered Jesus' body with myrrh and with aloes. It's a reminder of how the women went to the tomb early on Sunday morning to anoint Jesus' body. It's a reminder of how so often we will bring flowers with us to a funeral or to a burial as a symbol of grief and love. Finally, it's a reminder that God is able to transform even an ugly instrument of death into something beautiful.